Okay, we've got our uh, paint mixture where we want it to be. We've got our brush chiseled at a relaxed position. And we're ready to start our lower case. So we're going to load our brush up with a nice good dose of paint, but not too much because you don't want it to be blobby, but just enough so it's not streaking, streaky. So now we've got a nice relaxed chisel. We're going to start out with our um, lowercase a. As we start out with our round, I'm going to start out at this line here, which will be the top of our lowercase letters. So we start out with it round, round with a slight angled brush, come up and over and down hard 90 to the one-third point. So that's where we want to be at. We want to be at the one-third point there. So one-third, two-third, or one-third this way, either way. Now we're going to round that over with a vertical brush. We're going to round it over and we're going to do a hard 90 and come down and we're going to do a slight a uh, sweep, a uh, sweeping curve at the base. And the only two letters of this alphabet that do that are the capital R and the lowercase a. So the only times we have to do that. So we're going to go ahead and load our brush up, get it vertical, come up and over, hard 90, down, sweep it to the right, but see, now we're going to have to angle our brush at a super angle, just like we do with the capital R, if we're not taping it. So now we're just going to do like that, and it gets it lands right on it. See, the more you angle your brush, the more control you have as far as the paint um, becoming horizontal for you. And I'm just going to touch this a little bit up right there. And then um, we're going to come out of that stroke. Remember, we're also thinking about this inside gap right here, that eighth inch that we're maintaining throughout the alphabet at this size. So we're going to come with a gentle 45 out, then down, and then making a hook at the bottom. So we start out, we come down, sweep a 45, line ourselves up with the upper stroke or that eighth inch gap, then we spin counterclockwise, let up off the brush, and make our little hook like that. So we're letting up off the brush, spinning counterclockwise, and, and just thinking about that little radius in there. Then the um, B starts out, obviously, with a vertical stroke. So we're going to touch down at our top line, come down, being mindful of our letter spacing. In this case, it's just a little under an eighth inch. Stopping at the bottom in order to touch up with a horizontal stroke. And then we, for the um, for the round part of it, we're going to be at a 45 degree angle. We're going to come up out of that, spin hard horizontal, and then we're going to come straight down vertical, and we're going to stop. So 45 degrees, come up to the line, spin a hard 90, down, thinking about that inside space, and then stopping. The reason why is because we want to make the same letter, we want to make the same intersection at the top as we do at the bottom. And the way we do that is just repeat that. So it's like a mirror image. So it's a 45 degree this way, and all we're doing is just going to touch the inside of that stroke, pull down, and rotate up. And we're not even spinning the brush. It's just a 45 degree angle, and we just pull it over end up. And we're not doing that very often, so we're only doing that with what the B, the P, really that's the only two letters we're doing that with. But it really makes for a really nice uniform uh, consistent intersection. Um, if you just came down with it and tried to spin into that, you're going to make a very different intersection at the top than the bottom. So, now the C is exactly like the capital C. So all we're doing is we're going to, with a slightly angled brush, we drop down, spin it around, come down, spin counterclockwise, and stop at the 90 degree with our brush vertical. And at the top, we're just going to have a vertical brush, come up and over, 
hard 90 and we're going to go the exact same length, that third of the way down, third of the way down and stop. And so if, if the A was next to the C, if we were playing, spelling cat, those two points would be the exact same height. That, that helps make this uh, alphabet very mechanical and easy to execute that way. If we, just, if we have a mechanical concept in our mind, and the same with the bottom stroke is, is one-third. It's always one, one third, one third. There's some exceptions, but in these two letters, and well, in this letter, it's one third, one third. Now, the D is where we do our little tricky stroke. That's where we're um, going to just drop down with the corner of our brush, not make that loop or that round here so much because we want to save room for a very thin stroke right there. So we're just going to drop down with the corner of our brush, then come down. We'll make a hook down here, spin, let up on the brush, and make our hook thinking about this inside inside loop right there. We want to maintain that inside loop as our as that eighth inch loop that we're looking for. Now with a contracted brush, which is handy, now as we're going to do is we're going to make that thin same thin stroke here. So we just come in at a ho at a horizontal brush, and we're going to spin our brush clockwise super, super uh, uh, sharp, a super sharp spin. And all we're thinking about is making a, a, an eighth, an eighth inch radius in there. So we're just going to drop in, spin clockwise, and we're just concentrating on that eighth inch radius right there. That's all we're thinking about. This will take care of itself. Now once we've, we've got that, we've got the letter. Now we've got a similar um, uh, intersection at the top and bottom. Now we just do our vertical stroke, pull it down, and finish off the bottom. Now I went a little fat, you can see there, uh, just because I'm going so slow, um, that uh, for demonstration purposes, that uh, that I just I, I kind of left the brush sitting there, so it kind of puddled up on me there. Uh, and then the E. The E starts out just like a round, so we come with a slightly angled brush, come up and over, remembering our letter space as best we can, spin clockwise, thinking about this radius in here is what we want to focus on, making that look really nice and consistent as it goes around. And then we want to come, we're going to come up and over just like it with, with the C, only we're going to come down to the halfway point with the E. So this comes up and over, so it's either one-third or halfway. Come up, hard 90, spin, come down to the halfway point, and stop. Re Repallet the brush, and then just pull that horizontal over, and then just touch up that little point. And then for the, um, and then we're at the one, back at the one-third with this, which will, which will work out perfect for the E. Drop down, Spin cl clockwise, and thinking about that little radius in there. Then the F, the F uh, starts out with a little, little um, sweep at the top. There's a little tiny sweep at the top, but our main focus is our letter spacing. We want to maintain the exact same letter spacing as we have been even though we, I know we have a crossbar. So just, just, we can just do a horizontal brush, come down, maintaining our letter space until we get to the base, let up off the, before you hit the base, clean it up with a horizontal stroke. And then now we have a contracted br brush, which is perfect. Now we're going to make our uh, upper top bar and then we're just going to come out, clean that up, put a little radius on it. Now we still have that contracted. That's exactly what we want because we want this a little narrower, the crossbar. Now one, there's two ways we can do this. We can do it like this and leave it like that, which is perfectly fine because you know it's a lowercase f and we have this nice space in here. And you can read that, you know, whatever, whatever word it is, it's gonna, you'll be able to read it. Or you can go ahead and touch the other letter, the previous letter, whatever precedes it, and just and make a complete F 
like that, and that's perfectly fine too. Either one. Now the G is our, uh, we're back to our tricky little stroke on the top where we're just going um, <clears throat> to, where we're going to make our, uh, our connecting stroke later, just like we did with the D. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do, uh, drop down our corner, come down, and we're going to go, and we're going to spin and make our hook two brush strokes, two brush stroke widths before the baseline. And you'll see why. So we're going to come up and over, mindful of our letter space, come down, two brush stroke widths from the bottom, spin, make a hook, like that. And then we got our contracted brush, so now we're just going to go ahead and make our upper connecting stroke, our hook comes up and over, thinking about that. See now if I just drop that all the way straight down, we see we make a nice uh, silhouette, a nice negative space in there. I wouldn't do that because it's a waste of time. I just wanted to show you that that's our direction. That's our goal is to make that inside stroke, I mean that inside negative space look uniform, an eighth inch radius on the top and bottom and an eighth inch um, space all the way down. And so now we're going to touch down pull that stroke down and we're going to go to our halfway point between the two guidelines and we're going to go ahead and spin clockwise. That's why it's so good to have these, this uh, guideline for reference because now all your descending strokes will be the same length and that's what, another mechanical thing we want to establish. Now we're going to go above this baseline, just slightly above it, but we're going to line ourselves up with the, the, the first stroke. and. And just, and just dropping that down, spinning counterclockwise, thinking about this radius down here, but at the same time we're thinking about this little eighth inch radius as well. H, H starts out with a vertical stroke, keep mindful of our letter space again, touch down, pull down. That's where it's really important to be right in front of your you know, face on to your letter, not off to the side. If you're off to the side like this, you can't tell if the if the stroke is vertical or not. And that keeps you real vertical, having your face straight on. And that's why it's so important to have the guide, center of the guidelines at your, the base of your neck level so you can see the, the uh, see over your brush. And this is the same just like the B. We're going to start out with a 45 degree angle come up out of that to the line, hard turn, down, stop before the baseline, pull, clean up. And then the eye, the eye is going to start out with a vertical brush obviously from, from this guideline to the baseline, clean that up. And then the dot, the dot uh, starts just below the top guideline, not not against it. It looks better if it's just a little bo below it, and also a rectangle rather than a square. So we're going to touch down just below it, pull this down, stop. We'll clean up that bottom. And the and that that rectangle keeps keeps that um, consistency of verticalness throughout the alphabet rather than a little square which just looks like a little button this looks more like more it's more part of the uh, part of the alphabet being elongated in a rectangle so the j just goes ahead and the li starts out the same line come down and same halfway point spin clockwise stop at the 90 and this just has a little hook to it so it's just a halfway point between the two lines eighth inch spin counterclockwise and we're thinking about this radius out here making this little radius real nice looking and yeah of course the the one inside too you may have to clean things up a little bit the dot for the J is exactly like the dot for the I exactly the same so if the two were together for some reason, um, they would they would be consistent. They would be consistent. So a little bit of a rectangle. Okay, the K, as it begins with a vertical stroke, we come down. Th 
stop and clean that up. And then it just like the upper K, we're going to do the same thing, but within the guidelines of the lower case. So we're going to be a letter width apart with that eighth inch gap, come down, touch just above the halfway point, and then back down to another angle, but we want our, to maintain the front points to be maintained with the uh, vertical axis. So we start out dropping in, coming down just above the halfway point, then back out, and we want to think about it ending the same distance, um, you know, the, the same, uh, on the same line, on the same line as the, the top and the bottom. So that so that distance lines up, you know, it, it seems like it should be better if it were kicked out at the bottom, more natural. But this is the way it is with this condensed letter to keep them all more uniformed. L is just simply a vertical line set down, and my brush is probably about at a when I set down at that top at that top. Um, guideline, the brush is almost at a 45 degree angle. And then as I pull down, I, I kind of draw the brush, I kind of draw the brush, um, the, the, the angle changes. So as I, as I start out, almost at a, not quite a 45, maybe less than a 45. And then as I come down, I, 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 I start out like this. And then as I come down, I pull the brush this way to the base. To the baseline. That's the benefit of having a, a naturally relaxed chiseled brush versus a forced chisel brush. JJKL M. M starts out with a short little vertical like that. Clean that up. Recharge and repallate. And then a 45 degree, just like the H. So now we're just going to do an, just like this stroke of the H. Come up and over. Hard 90. Down. Looking at that eighth inch gap. That's what I'm looking at. The eighth inch gap. That's the goal. Keep that thing parallel as you can. It'll make, that's the, that's the whole secret. And then 45 again. Up off of this curve. Up and over hard 90 coming down stop before it. palette your brush if you need to to make a nice sharp corner those little corners need to be sharp look sharp like that and then the the N is just half an M so the exact same exact same scenario so we start out with a vertical brush, clean it up, recharge, repallet, 45 degree up, hard 90, thinking about that eighth inch gap coming down, coming down, and then pallet again just to give myself some sharp corners like that okay and then the oh, I'm in O the O is the same as a little uppercase O only small so we're just going to do our same basics basic round up and over down Letter space in mind, spin counterclockwise to a 90, looking at that nice little radius right down there. Looking good, radius, vertical brush, up and over, hard 90, and down, and then a um, rotate clockwise, and clean up if you need to. You know, P. So the P starts out with a vertical, a vertical with letter space there, comes down, descends to the halfway point. Now all of our letters will be at the halfway point. Halfway meaning between this guideline and this, uh, 
I guess I'd, you'd call it the next sentence guideline. 45 degrees, this is going to be just like the B. Lowercase b comes up and down and stop. Recharge, repallet, 45 the other way. Down and around. And bingo, and those are the only two letters that that do that. So I mean, you don't have to. We don't have to do that that often. And if you're in a hurry, element P Q. Q is our back to our tricky little scenario, connecting scenario, where we drop in here at the corner with the corner of our brush. Drop in the corner brush, come down, go all the way to the baseline, make a hook. Up, looking at that nice little eighth inch radius. Oops, we've got to con contract our brush. With a contracted brush, we're going to do a horizontal, drop in on the corner, come up and over, and make another nice little radius exactly like the bottom one. Then we just make a vertical stroke off of that, come down to the halfway point. Tap the brush to make a nice sharp point, nice sharp corners. And if you need to clean this, uh, clean this intersection up a little bit, you can do that. And then R. R starts out with a vertical, mindful of our letter space. And then we're going to clean up the bottom. I need to clean up the top for this one. Kind of getting light in, in the middle of my brush. The paint's getting a little get a little light, so I got to fill up the middle of the inside middle. Inside, you just got to fill that up good. It's running out of ink. <laughs> okay, now we're just going to do the same thing we did with the. Um, With the B and the H, we're just going to come off at a 45 degree angle. So 45 off of that, up and over, hard 90, come down a third, just like that, to that third point. That, see how mechanical that is? We're always going to be thinking of those thirds and halves. So we don't have to think about how far we're going. We we'll always have that in our mind. It's a very visual thing. Now the S is just like the uppercase S, where our goal is again to make that 45 uh, diagonal stroke right in the middle of the two guidelines top guideline bottom guideline we want to make that 45 right in the middle the best way to to uh, keep that in mind is back to the one-third system so in other words we're going to come up and over down one-third kick 45 down and then go one-third again down and then do our radius at the bottom now Problem with the S is it's always a tr it's always a problem. Not only do we need to think about that third to third connection, but we also need to th keep in mind our our uh, imaginary space in between <laughs> inside the the negative space. So we're going to come we're going to come uh, up and over, a slight angled brush, up and over, down. There's our one third point. Then we kick at 45. Another third, but we're also thinking about that letter space. Kick it down, 90, spin clockwise. See, we've got that, see where that, that line is lining up with that eighth inch uh, imaginary line. <laughs> but um, if you go with the one third, kick it over, and then think one third. And also, if you can kick your eye up there and think, okay, I also got to be at that imaginary line. And this S will, after doing it 700 times, will, you won't have to think about that anymore. And then uh, we just do, now we just finish it off just like we did everything else. An upper over the, over the round, hard 90, down one third, just like the R. Pull it, clean it up. And then the same thing with the lower. The lower, again, is the same length, that one third point. A very mechanical letter. 
come down counterclockwise thinking of that nice little radius right there and also this this inside radius too we can clean that up too we need to and then um, the T the T is uh, a little higher than starts out a little higher than you would imagine you think it would just be about the halfway point or just a little bit above this line but actually for the sake of um, for the sake of this letter being a condensed letter and very long the, uh, the T actually the T will actually start just below the top guideline so it's going to start just below that top guideline here and the same letter you know same almost kind of eighth inch gap so we start out just below that come down spin and contract your brush and and finish this off And then with a contracted brush, we're going to make these uh, the crossbar. So you can do that, and you can leave that, and that's fine. Or we could do this would be just like the F scenario. So you can leave that, or we can just go ahead and complete it. Touching the other letters, fine. Either way is fine and legible. Now the U, <coughs> the U, starts out with a vertical that goes into a hook. So we start out, touch down, come down, spin counterclockwise, let up, and make that a nice, nice eighth inch loop in there. Then with that eighth, you know, keeping that eighth inch gap, drop down, pull down, and finish it off at the bottom. The V, what we want to be mindful of with the V, is very, very slight angle on the V. Hardly any angle at all. So it just comes down just, just really slight angle like this. And we're also thinking about our letter width, just like the U. We want it to be that same width. We don't want to get that too wide. So we start out dropping in, coming down with just a slight angle. Hardly any, any angle at all. And then we get our letter width on this side, and we're, this is going to overlap too at the base. So we come in just a slight little uh, angle, and it's a pretty wide base at the bottom, pretty wide. And then we just and you go short at the, at the base with those strokes, so you can finish it off and make it look good. And then the W, the W is done exactly the same way. So we're just going to have just a slight angle just a tiny little angle like that stop before the base and then a letter and a half width and come down slight angle stop now we're going to do the same thing we do with the capital whereas we're going to we're going to tap our edge of our brush to get it to be contracted as much as possible and it, I, I know it doesn't seem like that's right, but you'll see how much air space is needed. So we're going to start in the middle. And we're going to come down and just slightly overlap. We're just going to slightly overlap. So come from the middle, come down, and just a tiny little bit of an overlap. Start in the middle, come down, and just and just a slight little overlap. See now you got a lot of nice air space. See how it's the same as the V. We need that. If we if I did a full width brush there, it the, it would practically black out, and there would be there would be hardly any white space at all. So we need to do those little thin, and it looks good. You I mean, looking at it, you'd think, well, it looks fine, and then we just clean up the bottoms, and then oops, clean it up too much. And then we just clean it up. And 
and then the uh, X is exactly the same way as the capital X, only it's just smaller again. <laughs> so that's, um, we're going to start with um, a slight angle to the, uh, just above the halfway point and then we're going to kick it back down but we also want to maintain that vertical axis from point to point so we don't want to we don't want to flare out the x it looks much better if we keep it within the confines of the letter space so we're going to start bring it down just above the halfway point kick it down but thinking as much as we possibly can of lining up these two points vertically finish it off and then we'll do the right side. Same thing. We're going to come down, touch that point, kick it over, and just trying to make it as, as much as we possibly can. It's going to look a lot better, look more like a condensed letter than if we were to let this flare out too much at the base. Then the Y. The Y. starts out like the U, but we're going to come down and make our hook about, about two strokes width above the baseline, just like we did with the G. And those are the only two letters that do that, the G and the Y. So now we're going to come vertical, come down, just before we get to that point, we're going to whip it around, make our hook. And then we're going to pull this down. And at the halfway point, we're going to bring it around just like we did with the G. So this comes down, eighth inch gap, come down, spin clockwise at the halfway point, stop at the vertical. Then just above, then we're going to line ourselves up with this stroke, line ourselves up, and just above the baseline, drop down, come down, spin counterclockwise to make that radius. And we're thinking about this radius down here. Now the Z is exactly the same way as the uppercase. Isn't that nice? A lot of these letters are exactly like the uppercase. Kind of makes it convenient and mechanical again and so we can drop down make our make our top horizontal this at the letter width matching our letter widths from the, uh, in comparison to the rest of the letters in this case all these were about mm, seven eighths of an inch in width and then we want to do the exact same thing with the base bring it over line it up line them up clean them up and now all we have to do is connect those two strokes makes it nice and mechanical now all we have to do is go from A to B right corner to left corner drop in at that corner pull down right into the left corner and then now the numbers starting with the number one start with a vertical stroke we come down Just short of the base. Clean that up. Now we're going to make a radius at the top with a horizontal brush from the inside corner, left corner. We're going to make a radius and then we're going to come down a stroke. That'll make a little tab. Then we're going to clean that tab up. So we start out right in that corner, make a nice little radius, come out about a stroke width like that. And now with the chiseled brush, we're going to come from that point. We're going to pull straight horizontal. Touch down, straight horizontal makes a nice tab. The two, with a slight angle brush, just like we start with all the round letters, we're going to come with an angle brush up and over, down, just below that line or at the third, at the third, uh, third of the waypoint and now here's where we're going to 
Here's where we're going to come up and over, down 90, and at that third point, we're going to kick 45. And as soon as we get down to line our, where we're lined up with the upper stroke, we're going to head back 90 again and stop just before the baseline. So it's just our basic round, basic round stroke, vertical brush, up and over, hard 90, down 45, hitting that stroke, down, stop before the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to line ourselves up with this stroke to do the bottom uh, leg of this two that goes, it's going to go vertical and it's at the one-third point. Once again, we're at the one-third point. So we just drop down, come straight down, stop before the baseline, chisel, make a nice corner and meet these two intersecting corners. And for the three, the three, we are going to start out exactly the same. So we're going to start out with the uh, round over, 90, come down to the third point, stop, clean that up. Now here's where we do something a little different, obviously. We're going to be a vertical brush, spin around, come down, we're going to sweep horizontally to the left. Coming down, we're going to just sweep, make a nice sweeping stroke to the left, lining the left corner of our brush with the middle of this stroke. So that's up and over, hard 90, down, sweep left, right about the halfway point. Now from there, we're going to make a little tab. So from there, we're just going to drop our brush and bring it down about a stroke uh, width. Then from that point, we're going to go from a 45, come back around, down, and bring it around. So a 45 degree angle, out, quick, quick 90, clockwise 90, vertical brush. Then at the one third point, lined up like lined up with that two, we're just going to drop down, bring it down. Been counterclockwise to make a nice radius. That's been the halfway point. Now the four is unique because it's going to have a unique top of a, of the number. We have to make this super shallow to, in order to maintain our condensed letter or alphabet. So that first angle, that front angle on the four is going to be super shallow, just like we've been doing with the letters. So we're going to start at our top line come down just super shallow down to the halfway point right there halfway meaning from the top guideline to the bottom line kind of line now we're going to do something a little unusual where that is we're going to just meet the corner of our the left corner of our brush with the right corner of that stroke like that just barely connect it and pull it straight down the reason why is if i start halfway what's going to happen yep there's not going to be any inside uh, negative space triangle so the only way we can do that without making our letter strokes half the width of the, of the rest of them, we have to just touch the corner of that, like that, come down, and now you see. Stop. Clean that up. And now you see we have a nice triangle. It's, it's I got that eighth inch right there. We've got a good letter width or number width and that ma that's very similar to the width of the rest of the letter. So it didn't look out of place. Otherwise, it was too wide or different in any way. It's going to look like a different alphabet. So that's your best bet right there. Now from that, all we do is we just do a horizontal stroke right touching down to the front of that pulling and just a tiny little tab don't go too far just a teeny little tab that's all we want to do is just a tiny little tab it's like we do it for the ampersand <laughs> because it'll look more uniform with the rest of the numbers it'll look like the, it'll look like it belongs with the rest of the numbers okay in the five the five starts out with a vertical stroke mindful of our letter spacing that comes down to the halfway point. So once we get to the halfway point, we can clean that up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come off that stroke. 
with a round just like we've been doing for the rest of them at the halfway point we're going to spin come down and do a round so off of this we come up out down clockwise to a um, to a round just like it was and then we're going to finish that off with one third up so it matches all the if if two three and five are all together all these strokes right here would match and line up come down nice radius nice gap and then what we want to do with this stroke, we can follow this stroke now, we can pull this one down, but just go about halfway, the halfway point, point between this line and this line. Don't go all the way down to the, th the uh, third, because it just doesn't look good with the five. It just looks visually better if we just come down to that point. It's too weighty otherwise. It just doesn't, it doesn't look right. And then just connect those two. And then the six starts out just like a, a O or a zero. So a six just comes up and over, down, counterclockwise to a 90 with a radius. And all that nice radius. So we're looking for that outside radius. Now the six does the same thing as a five. It comes out of that halfway point, rounds and rounds at the bottom. So it just comes up. And nice gap, spin clockwise. And then the top, in this case, does come down to the, uh, to the third, uh, one third point. So it comes up and over just like a standard round letter, hard 90, come down, eighth inch gap to the one third, to the third point, or just below that line. That's our six. Now the seven is very unique, has a very unique situation. The seven has a, starts out with a letter width, so we establish that first, or in this case number width, and we come over, line it up, and we get to establish that. Now when we do this stroke, the next stroke, we're actually going to come down at a slight graceful arc and come to the baseline. Now when, what we're aiming for is from this corner we're going to come down and we're going to go down an imaginary line and that imaginary line is as if there was a T here. Let's say this was a letter T and it went and you had a vertical line that went all the way down or a stroke that went all the way down. We're going to go down the middle of that left side of that stroke. So if there was a line right there and a line right there we would come down the left side right down dead center. Why? Because that's the visual center of the of the number if you went if you ended up down if you ended up down uh, lined up with this front bar it would look way too a front heavy and it looked like it would fall this way if you if you went that right down the middle it, it's it's also going to have this big strange looking um, space in in here so your best bet your visual your visual balance is starting here pulling down nice graceful arc imaginary line at that on that right on the left edge of the T and then just cap it off and that's your that's your seven the eight starts out with um, starts out with a couple of rounds that start out like your basic round so your basic round it comes up and over down now the unique part of this just above the halfway point we're going to swing it horizontally to the right that'll give this nice connecting space uh, air that to breathe that we need instead of just bringing it around it would just it wouldn't it won't it would just fill that space now we're going to do an, uh, the basic round on top we're going to have with a ver vertical stroke come up and over hard 90 down and then we're going to do the same thing the same thing with this is just going to be a horizontal sweep to the left. And all we're thinking about is making that eighth inch, that nice eighth inch um, negative space inside. That's what we're thinking with these little radiuses. That's our, that's our goal. Because that's, that's where the eye looks. That's what the eye sees um, that's, that's balanced. Now we're going to start out the same way. Horizontal, 
we're going to reverse it or mirror that, what we just did. So horizontal, down, and then spin counterclockwise. So right in the middle, out, down, counterclockwise, radius, 90. Same with the, same with the uh, right side, exactly. Out, down, clockwise. 90. Okay, and then the 9, the 9, the 9 starts out with a, just like a regular round, so it's going to come up and over, down, at the halfway point we're going to make a hook. We're going to make a nice little hook. At the eighth inch. Now, now we're going to finish this off just like we did with a with a with an O. So we come up and over, vertical brush, hard 90, down, hard 90 clockwise, stop with a radius, and horizontal. Following that stroke, we're going to come down to the third again, that third point, eighth inch gap, come down. Spin counterclockwise and round it off. Not gonna worry about too much about um, cleaning up all this stuff. I'm just I'm just trying to show the letter strokes right now. It's just the direction of the brush, things like that. And then finally, the zero is an O, is a capital O. So it just it comes up and over, down. Counterclockwise to a 90 sweep, nice little radius. This up and over, hard 90 down, hard 90 clockwise. There you go.